We are live! Yay! <laughs> Tia Eldalieva at you, coming at you with the Ainu Linda Lay lesson one, and we've had a little bit of technical adventures. Um, oh boy. Hang on. I think that's my other browser. I'm going to close it out. <laughs> oh boy. Yes, it's, it's, no it's, worries. About a, it's about a seven second delay. <clears throat> it's okay. Um, channel videos. Okay. Right. We're good. So I think that we're, um, yeah, I forgot to close the window. The same thing that I told you guys about. <laughs> uh -huh. So this is always fun. So I'm going back to the Chrome browser and we're back. So sorry about that, you guys. We're having a little bit of technical stuff, but we're, we're on it. Okay. We're going to be, um, I'm Callan Turniel. If you didn't notice from the name tag. And tonight we have Dave and Dikendre hi. with us from Hawaii. Hey, <laughs> hey, Dikendre, yeah. say hi to all of the Tia Elderly of the world. <laughs> 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 so, yay! Okay, we're gonna like get started here pretty quickly. Um, let me go ahead and add the screen for Dave. Um, My, it looks like your screen yeah, is you're well, doing th something. There, there you go. go. All right. There you go. So, and it's totally fine. We're, uh, do you guys out in the audience, do you want to see the actual I know Linda Lay, the document, or do you want to see us off in the side? Because I can change the settings to, bam, this. How do you guys prefer it? Hey. There's probably a, like it's still the delay. So, mm -hmm. yay! Actually, what I'll do is I'll scroll up. You like to see the faces, okay? Brilliant. We will show our faces, so you guys can have your own document though that you can download. I put the link in the live chat and also in the regular comments below the video and in the text body and on the Facebook event. So you'll be able to find this download link. Um, this is for lesson one this evening. See, I'm going to go through and see Lomi Lindo. Ian is here, yay, he's one oh, of cool. our teachers. He's in New Jersey. Hey Ian, giving you a shout. Pandora is here. Pandora is one of our teachers also in Florida. Narin, V, hang on, I'm going to try your name. V, Yi, Hia, is that how you say your name? Hi, everyone. Uh, Adam says, should be able to find the link for the lesson PDF at the top of the chat window. Yes, thank you for that. Tarya coming from, is it, are you in Cyprus still? I think you were the one traveling, if I'm not mistaken. May Galvanen. Okay, I knew Linda Lay. I knew Linda Lay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anyone in the chat? Yes, we're here. Uh, oh, Adam says, Ellen Sila Lumen Omen Tielvo. Yeah. There are some technical issues. I appreciate you helping out, Adam, very much. Checking it out. Megovanen, Siren of the Void is here. Excellent. Are you still um, uh, looking at your document there? Me? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't yeah. actually switch it that, that, that so time. Animated, animated um, Siren of the Void. Yeah. Miss Jamie, has anyone else been eyeing the neat Tia Eldalieva shirts on Redbubble? Yes. <laughs> now, Lisa, I, I have to ask and, you something. Um, and actually, the, um, we had a post today from Ian. Who okay, was I, I was just going to make sure that Dave, the ahead, PDF that you made of this are the reference links uh, on the endnotes. Are they actually clickable? Can you, can you go to the URLs? Because if you can't, that takes away from a lot of the materials that I that I put in there. So I just wanted to make sure that they were, I'm if you click sure, on them. Although, okay. I believe that you can. So let me close out the Word version. I'm pretty sure I 
okay. have a PD version. Yeah, I have this right, right. here. So let me click on okay. one of the links just to see. Because when I printed it, uh, it didn't. Oh. And that's what, you know, Honestly, and, and I printed okay. it with, with Fox, with Fox, PD, Fox at PDF. And okay. I'm like, it this is supposed like to be the best. Number. Yeah, the number doesn't but if yeah. there is a reference that is booked then it does like a link to heart mm -hmm. it, it will uh, okay like it, yeah. there, a lot of them are are in little brackets that say ref in there and, and the, the, yes. the ref is actually those, those, a, a it hyperlink looks like they do go to a website All right. and and oh, okay, that's can cool. click on those as long as they right. have a web browser and right. you know okay. everything I yeah. just wanted to make sure that that was functional because that's important. It, it appears it is. So, okay. and if it's not for anybody that's downloaded it, um, like we'll help you, you know, get all of this. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, yeah, so that's not a problem. We've got, okay. All right. I'm checking in Facebook just to make sure everybody is in like, that's supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. and that they're not having trouble getting in. It looks like we're fine here. Okay, all messages, Facebook comment. That might have been my comment. Okay, looks like Facebook is fine. Okay, so I have my notes and um, new comment. Oh, so thank you, Miss Jamie, for noticing our awesome Red Bubble store. If you guys are interested, we have a link tree that is, you know, Elvin Spiritual Path. And we also on the website, elvinspirituality.com, we added shop. You'll see it on the menu and it'll drop down. And yeah, we have the Red Bubble store prominently there, just FYI. And Ian, we're going to try to get your link uh, showing up somehow. I don't know why it's not yet, but um, meanwhile... If you guys are on Facebook at all, he actually posted a link to his store that has some interesting Tolkien items also, and I've been eyeballing his too. Uh, let's I see, can, how I long is it expected to last? About 60 to 90 minutes, like ish. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers that question. Not the delay, the class. Yeah, the class, originally we had the idea of 60 to 90 minutes that varying, because this is our first time doing it. Uh, imagining maybe going on means merry meetings. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. I, I'd have to look into the etymology of that. And I don't think that we have our resident uh, linguist, David Salo, present. Oh, I did invite him. Uh, let's see here. Soulmate healing technical issues are part of our streaming world. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That flat fellow peeks in. Hi. <laughs> Technical issues, part of today's song. Oh, I guess we should uh, turn this down. Okay, let's see. Okay. I will turn off my ringer. That's great. Okay. So we'll need, oh, you guys are all being friends with each other. This is great. Main figured from context clues. Okay, well met. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm reading what Adam said about me as well. Yeah, go on and okay. So you guys are all having a discussion about the meaning of my, my Govanan and. We're going to, like, I mean, I'll just leave the comments there. We'll definitely discuss that, but probably not tonight because it'll it'll run over time. And I believe that we're going to be having some basic Elvish. That'll be, like, the next part. Like, after Ainu Lindale and Valaquinta, we will be looking into basic Elvish because it turns out that we probably need to know a lot of basic Elvish, particularly Quenya, which is the elder language. Um, I know many of you are interested in Sindarin too, so we'll definitely talk about that later, but we're probably going to need to get on with the class. We will have language lessons. Yes, we will have language lessons. Uh, okay, I'm scanning up on this right now. Silmaril, so, okay, you're... Okay. Okay.
Okay, I'm just, I'm double checking to make sure that I didn't get anybody that's like really lost, can't find the document. But it looks like we're all having, uh, oh, Adam and Ian, yes, they know each other and <laughs> they're saying hi. That's great. Excellent. So we're, yeah, and this is, this is when I got on. So I just wanted to double check. You guys all have the document downloaded? Dave put it together today and I made it a PDF really quick and then uploaded it to the back end of our WordPress so that you guys have a link to download it. I successfully worked. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I'm just gonna stick on topic. If you guys are talking with each other, I'm gonna kind of glide over it, I hope. That I'm not offending anybody. I just want to double check and make sure that I'm um, getting everything here that we need tonight. Wow, you guys are way busy in the chat room. <laughs> Yay. And hi, Sean, if I didn't say hi to Sean already, just in case, because um, I think that I said hi to everybody else. Um, okay, looks like we're at the bottom. Yay, 6.38. Okay, so everybody, it looks like, is on the page, Dave. Okay, so that's cool. Before uh, we, you know, like we'll have introductions and all of that, but I wanted to talk to you about what, like created this whole thing and we decided that we needed some lessons in legendarium like only legendarium because our path is based on the legendarium and yes we do bring in like influences from other pathways when there is nothing in the legendarium that addresses that very thing but we default first to the legendarium and so we had to um you know really get used to our brand i guess um compared to other elven paths and it's totally okay if you guys are visiting and you're like eh, i don't want to just follow the legendarium but i'm curious about the legendarium you're absolutely welcome here uh we just want to tell you that we will be defaulting for the purposes of the path to the legendarium. And so that is how we kind of stand out compared to other elven spiritual paths that are out there right now. And we are all about elven spiritual paths. We want them to exist. We love that, that it's like, you know, it's a big wide world and, you know, just buffet, you know what I mean? <laughs> everything is available. Everything is what it is. It's a but we offer a special dish at that buffet. Okay, and so we're hoping that we give you guys a taste of this. You've already had some tastes of our rituals, like the energy that we build in the rituals. And many of you are also in our private end of rituals. And actually, I want to welcome Miss Janie because she's our newest member. Yay! Um, I wanted to uh, tell you that this is going to be an even deeper piece. And we wanted to make this one public for you so that all of you can take a like nice taste sample okay of what we're going to be doing and so far we're not really sure about how many lessons it was at first estimated to be about 50 lessons um all together so we're we're like finding our speed it might be about 20 now like you know figuring it out but you guys will be along for the ride with us and if you want to join us um let us know or I can uh, just direct you to elvenspirituality.com and there is membership joining links there with PayPal. We are gonna be getting a Patreon page pretty soon. And there will also be, I understand from Alira that there is also a merchandising opportunity there too. So just FYI on that. Okay, Nareen, says, I am not familiar with the Legendarium and that's why I'm here. Awesome, you are perfect. This is great. I would, I, I, I'd like to make a, make a comment here. What, what, yes. what, we're, what we're doing is very similar to what in uh, Judaism is called Midrash, in which uh, if, if 
data doesn't exist in the in the Torah for a certain question, the pe the the scholars of that uh, tradition do, do the best edu ed educated guess with a bit of uh, creative um, placement, and they come up with new things. And that's essentially what we've done here. Where 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 legendary that it doesn't exist, we get the best fit. Okay, excellent. That's a good explanation. Um, I did not know about that term in the path of Judaism, so that's wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Dikendre, did we lose you, or um, no, did you just turn your camera off? I'm here. Okay, excellent. Um, it, it's showing me a little alien something or other in the in the in the uh, bar. So I just wanted to make sure that everything is okay. Yeah, I see something as well, but it's not mine. Okay. Okay. There's a little right. like, well, we, a we little don't have to show our faces for the tonight. I mean, yeah. I usually show mine because you guys like are used to seeing me and, you know, hearing me and everything, but I'm trying to integrate other people into the path um, so that you guys get to like a chance to know any of us. And in fact, I've asked a few other teachers um, if they want to join the chat, like with us next time or, you know, a different lesson. But tonight we are featuring Da Kendre, who is in Hawaii. And he's been just, oh my gosh, like just awesome dedication. Okay. <laughs> so um, we have other excellent dedicated teachers and we want you all to meet each other at some point and um, it's going to be awesome. Hi, Peachy Fruit. Yay, you're here. So, oh, I love Catalan Daniel. That's great. Okay. Uh, may I introduce, drum roll, brrr, Dave, the lore master of Tia Eldelieva. Take it away, Dave. Hello, everyone. Uh, do you want me to uh, just start reading here or just introduce yeah, myself you can, yeah that'd be great okay that'd be great uh, yeah they might want to know like w how you got into the legendarium okay. and everything and why well, you are the lore master yeah I, I basically i grew up with this this was my personal religion from the time i was like eight years old uh and i'm on the autism spectrum so i related to the stories a little bit different than probably a regular person does it to me, they were um, not just stories, but a mytho history. And uh, first, The Hobbit, and then The Lord of the Rings. And and if, if if people read them in that sequence, they become more and more complex. And when then, when I was twelve years old, um, that was when The Silmarillion was published. And uh, I took to it at that time, as they say, like a duck to water. And that became, you know, really cemented as my as my personal religion. And I really started researching it, and that's why I became the War Master because these are living stories to me. You know, much like um, pers uh, a person who is raised in Christianity or whatever and is really dedicated to it. You know, that's that's the sort of thing that happens. And uh, so that's my story of how I got into it. Excellent. We have some people here that are totally like they relate to that so mm -hmm. much, Dave. So you're way in good company. That's cool. um, although I, I don't know how many of them like embodied the stories in the way that you did. I also posted mm -hmm. a link um, in the comments in the live stream in case some of you are latecomers that you didn't grab the uh, notes for the lesson. Oh, okay. Go ahead and click that link and grab the PDF because that's what's on the screen. And so you can you know, like look at it on your phone or whatever you want to do. In fact, I may do that myself. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, uh, okay uh, I'll start here. Um, do you want me to read the, the full sentences and then go back to my end notes or how do you want to? That would be, that'd be great. That'd be great okay. because then people can hear it because one of the things that I think is brilliant about Tolkien and his work is to be able to hear it. There right. is a, there is a melody, there is a harmony and a melody to even his prose that is just not duplicatable. It's amazing. So yes, you can, you can read it out loud. Okay. 
<clears throat> there was Iro, the one, who in Arda is called Iluvatar, and he made first the Ainur, the holy ones, that were the offspring of his thought, and they were with him before aught else was made. Aught is an old word for before anything else was made. Um, and I have two end notes here. It, um, it, 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 the, the first, the very first uh, opening part of the sentence there, there was, there was Iru the one is uh, different than a way a lot of stories um, of past times start with. In the in the beginning, there was whatever. This is a, a pure temporal reference to a past event or a past state, but if you look at it in detail, it doesn't seem to limit Iru to that even though it's referring to a past state and past action, it doesn't limit uh, Iru to just just the past. Um, so that that's my first end note there. And um, and then let's see here. Let me click. Okay, we have um, a, com a couple of comments that say uh, the one, the monad. I would say that, yes, that would be the case. Mm -hmm. But I that Dave is trying to reach beyond that and say that it's not like in the beginning, i.e. that there's going to be an end. It, it always is like it's, yeah, it just right. exists. Yeah, that's yeah, and that's the, Eru, that's the concept. Um, I remember uh, when Ray, my husband, was alive um, back in, you know, the 2000s when we first started this path. He also felt that um, that Eru had maybe even created other worlds and, and did other things before creating Ea and Ardha, and then even has gone on to create more. That's just what the energy does, like of the one. It just, it's on this endless creation and then destruction cycle, which, you know, I realize that we're jumping ahead, but the, you can't create unless there's something that is destroyed too. So it's built within the mechanism, which is, I think, why we have a force that is similar, you know, to in these stories, Melkor, Morgoth, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but I guess that that's part of the whole comprehension of this is that we're doing this from the beginning, even though it's not the beginning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was the, that was a concept that I was going yeah. for. That Maybe it was the beginning of AA, but it was not right. the beginning, the beginning. Right, the beginning, yeah. Right? So. Well, yeah, because you have, uh, later, you know, later you have the, the, the terms timeless holes and, and so forth, you know, that, 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 yes. that indicate that the, you, it's outside of time. And unfortunately, my uh, word here uh, froze. That's why it's, the thing is spinning. Oh, so. okay. okay. Uh, let's see here. I see. All right. And I'll be I'll be turning on my light here pretty soon because it's starting to get dark here, and this light is not enough to uh, keep shining. But I'll get that in a moment. Let me read the questions here. Yeah, the same. I never forget seeing the tra trailer. Oh yeah. I'll see if I can. Okay, Siren of the Void has a really good question. It says, "Why does there have to be destruction before we create?" What it is is that in the third third dimension, okay, um, and this isn't necessarily from the legendarium, this is from other spiritual teachings, but that there is in the third dimension, okay, so other dimensions, it's different, but in the third dimension, which is where we live, okay, yes, there's, yes, in other traditions, there is a constant cycle of you know, death and rebirth. Uh, we see this in the in the cycle of the year. We see this in the cycle of even the day. We see this in the cycle of months with the moon. So we we see this, you know, the birth cycle and it and it grows and then you know it reaches maturity and then it falls out. Okay. We we have the a lifetime. Okay. Like for humans that you know we have average lifetime, you know, that we go, go through this path. Okay, everything goes through a birth and a death, everything. Not anything is immune to death. And I believe the reason is, is because in the third dimension, things need to die to go to back to those other dimensions in order to make room to create more. So if, if we had death 
or I'm sorry, if we didn't have, it would be like so much creation, like, you know, it would be like bursting at the seams. Okay. So I also believe that that had to do with why the elves had to leave Middle Earth because of cycles of death and rebirth, like quickening and other things, but get to that later. But I hope that that kind of answers your question. Does that help? Yes, I think that that is correct. She says, because the energies were too dense. Yeah, exactly. Because it's matter. It's like, you know, like a rock, like, you know, um, we are in a, a really physically dense um, dimension here. Yes. And we need to make room for new creations by the death of old ones. Um, there's other, I'm hoping that I catch them all. Um, let's see. Uh, time is not linear in regards to Eru. That is correct. It's exactly. I would say cyclic, yeah. cyclical and never ending. Okay. Stars explode. Okay. Ian says stars explode and created metals and other elements. Okay. And that yeah, is true. true. Yeah. That is true. But it's still, it's like even that um, science actually clarifies right now that we're part of a big bang that is like completely still expanding like even now but at some point so there are theories that say it'll just expand forever and keep expanding forever my theory is similar to einstein in that like at some point it's going to reach a max and then all come back in and keep going in and keep going in but that's that's my theory Okay, time is a human measurement, only movement exists. Yeah, so time is, well, I mean, I guess time could be also like, but just in the body. So like, you know, animals have bodies, plants have bodies. So I think the third dimension is about time, you know, and, and the manifestation into matter, okay? Uh, right, the cycles, yes. Okay, life would not exist without supernovas. That is true. Because the, okay, supernovas. Nicholas is here. Hi, Nicholas. Yay. Okay, Sorry. yeah, it does help. Okay, big crunch. Uh, yes, big crunch, big bang and big crunch. Yes. Exactly. That, that yeah. works. That works, Ian. Okay. Continue, I Dave. Sorry, I just wanted to get through the comments. Okay. I had a malfunction here. Anyway, I had to, uh, the, the word crashed. Okay. It was a big to, uh, to do. You may have been watching the screen. I don't know, but. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was, uh, I was let's busy see. looking at the comments. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, uh, and then uh, my second end note here, hopefully this will take me to it and not crash the thing again like it did before. Uh, unfortunately, it does seem to be spinning, but I'll just go down to it. Okay, yeah, and this is where um, I uh, made the the as you as you see here, they were with him before odd else was made. In, in other words, he or she or whatever you want to call it, Iru, uh, made um, facets of its thought, and it must have wanted. To, to do that, you know, uh, 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 and uh, so I, I put the um, the uh, reference to the Greek uh, term uh, uh, pleroma uh, from the from the uh, Greek root word pleroun, which to fill up an empty thing, to complete an an incomplete thing. So Iru must have wanted to, must have felt in some sense incomplete. So he wanted to, you know, make extra beings, whatever you want to call them, extra essences. Okay. Go ahead and um, I remember the term brings me back to astronomy studies, music of the spheres, not music of pancakes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Okay. So that's what we have so far. Right. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, I, I take it back. Um, Soulmate Healing says, yeah, in 3D, it's not how the NASA says it's all fake. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, there's some controversy there. Um, but yes, I get it. 
Gotcha. This is just a second here. This is uh, okay. interfering with my, if I can get a, uh, th this would happen now, you know. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, huh. Let's see here. I'll see if I can just dismiss it, but that may or may not work. Yeah, I'm actually going to the link so I can have the document here at the same time so I can right. still monitor the comments. Right. But you there, guys there we can go. actually look at the document and right. just listen or, you know, what and have you. The, and the next sentence is, and he spoke to them, propounding to them themes of music, and they sang before him, and he was glad. And I have a, a, a number of references for that. Let me see. Come on, get out of my way. This is, oh, uh, no. <laughs> computers well it's i know what's going on but i can't do anything about it at, at this point okay okay uh, uh, okay let's see here uh oh uh, yeah these are the 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 different versions of that of that sentence uh book of lost tales one says here now he would yeah. speak propounding to them themes of song and joyous hymn which makes the act of singing more definitive uh, and oh. from the same reference, the theme is also called a mighty, des mighty design of his heart. And, and that's, oh, wow. that's, that's kind of telling there, you know, that, that, yeah, that, very that, much. that it was very much his desire to do that. <clears throat> and then well, um, boy, that kind of relates to the all father, because in a way it's like he wanted his own family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Yeah. That's that's a really good way to put it. I didn't even yeah. think of the familial aspect, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And Sarah Wall says Eru was lonely. Yeah. Siren of the Void says exactly. poor yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I might be able to be convinced it's a hologram. This would be yeah. Narin. <laughs> um, and that, I mean, you know, everything could be a virtual reality. And we all entered into this big giant video game called Arda, the Earth. Uh, music of the pancakes is when you drop your frying pan trying to flip a sweet. <laughs> <pan. laughs> That's awesome. Shake's I mean, head at the issues. How unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's uh, okay. And my phone is like not cooperating either. So, guess what? Um, I'm not going to be reading this on my phone, clearly. Uh, okay, I'm and supposed the, to be present with you guys. That's what's happening there. So, Dave, the, uh, you're going to have to like read uh, the sentences. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the fourth the uh, the fourth note that I have is 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 kind of a it, it's not directly related, but it's tangentially related in, in that uh, in my investigations, I found out that music as an element of creation is rather rare in world um, mythologies, and I have a link to a paper on that. Uh, can, can you summarize that? I, I'm curious about what you found in that. What did it uh, say? Well, it, 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 it's it, 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 was, it was actually written by one of the um, people at the at the token um, conventions, whatever they call them. You know, the ones that are sponsored by the uh, token estate. Um, they have a number of them, but uh, it was basically that uh, this this guy. I don't remember the author's name, but it's in the link. Um, who did a study of world mythologies and and Tolkien was about the only one that really was, you know, out there with music as a creative element. Um, nobody, mm. I mean, I mean, other people will, uh, other mythologies will mention sound or or natural things like wind or stream, you know, water sounds, things like that, but not actual music itself as a creative. Uh, act as a creative substance, you know, so. Hmm. Okay. And I am not an, a either Christian or Abrahamic meaning umbrella path. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like all of the, like the Judaism, Islam mm -hmm. and Christianity. I am not an expert in like the origin stories from there, but I wonder if, because I know that music is important in these cultures, but is it, um, and maybe somebody else knows, was the world created with music, like in the those stories? Like, I mean, not, possibly, or it was just like, in, uh, I, is done, right? Like sorry. they just wave their hand, right? Not yeah, in Christianity. Uh, yeah. 
um, having been okay. sorry to butt in, having been okay. No, I want you to butt in. This is good. <laughs> um, growing up in Christianity, it's very much taught in Genesis and then again in uh, John that basically in the beginning there was just God, the Christian God, and there was nothing but advanced ex exp uh, expanse water. It was just there, and he just created everything through word. He said, let there be light. It was light, divided it into dark day and night. Everything was done by spoken command. There yeah, wasn't we're, yeah, yeah. any music. It was just, yeah. I, I will this to happen. It happened. Yeah, okay. I, and, I mean, it's still throat activated. Like, I mean, I've always talked about, like, in my own healing practice, et cetera, that our throat or our throat chakra, the blue, you know, chakra here is our ATM card of the universe. And what we do is we speak things into being like consciously or consciously. Now, what it is, is that because we're human and we, you know, I mean, in my point, on some level, we agreed to be in these, you know, cool, like flesh meat suits that have their own problems, you know, stuff like that. But we came to learn a lot. And one of the things is, is that we were already in the middle of what is already created before, even when we have like, you know, other energies that we enter into that there's already things in motion. And we, we kind of like just jump into the stream. Okay. And then once we get our bearings, we actually through our voice, can begin to start making a co-reality. I mean, we, we can't like erase everything else, but we can certainly participate in our own reality. And I, and I think that by saying that, I just wanna make sure that people are seeing like what I'm looking at. So like each of us as a human being, we, we are like a center point in like and our energy can go all the way out to the edges of the universe and yet we're really tiny as a speck also at the same time so when people say that we you know oh it's it's not worth um you know working at this or that or the other it's i'm not big enough to make a difference yes you are you actually go out all the way to the edges of creation and so, but what it is, is that you would change your experience, not necessarily another person's experience because they have a different path. So you could, you create your own experience. And we do all of this subconsciously by, you know, our families and our societies and all of this. And eventually, you know, we want to start taking over the driver wheel. Okay. And really create that consciously rather than subconsciously. And what I love about Tolkien is that he adds the element of music also. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe in the Hindi myths that music is a part of their creation and cosmology also. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. This, this, this author mentioned that he... Uh, apparently went over, I guess, up to a, a hundred or possibly even over, o over that uh, different world mythologies and uh, found very, very few in which uh, music was a, an actual creative element. Uh, so Interesting. I just put that. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yes. I'm not a scholar on that. So yeah. that's brilliant that you found that document. So yes. And, and we talk about this because, okay, guys, in my, you know, in my, uh, I guess, access to uh, the legendarium is a, a, a really excellent uh, spiritual path. Prior to this, I mean, I had, I had explored many things, Christianity, Buddhism, you know, lots of things, ended up in neo-paganism and heathenism and like basically pre-Christian European based spiritual systems where, but like, anyway, like around the world, like actually I was exposed to, you know, shamanic Native American techniques. Um, you know, there's things in Africa, spiritual, like the spirituality of the African continent that is intermixed with even other things in the Western world and other things. 
lots of these do not have music as a creative element. They have, you know, the coupling, you know, like sex. Okay, we, we notice like even in Wicca, you know, like the joining of the male and female, okay, in order to create the magical child, okay, of whatever it is that, and so that is the creation within there. And I want, I've always, been asked like what is the biggest difference like by pagans they come to me and say what's the biggest difference of the legendarium compared to you know everything that like we do in wicca and i tell them how the creation actually happens through the throat and singing is how it happens in the legendarium and like there's other methods depending on the you know the spiritual system that you're looking at for other things uh, Lisa, I might have the only way I can get rid of this problem here that I got going on is to log out and log back in. But that means it, when I log out, of course, I'm going to lose oh, the stream. You. Okay. And, and I'll have to rejoin it. But okay. that, that's the only way okay, I'm going to I'll tell you what. Go ahead and log in and or, or log out and log yep. in. And I'm going to scroll through the comments just to like catch okay. up because I noticed a whole bunch went in. So okay. I'll, see you in right. a, I'll see you in a second. Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to go over here and scroll up and see. Okay. Okay. I typed Jesse in there. Okay. How magical words are magical. Words are musical. I agree with that. And I think the best word musician is Tolkien, like hands down. Okay. The best linguist of probably all time and I just feel like, I mean, yes, he had something extra, okay? I do believe that he had the ability to like shamanically journey into the imaginal realm, like that that's what the sh shamans call, like it's not imagination because that's your personal world, but imaginal realm means that it's like the, the connected one for, all of us that we access that the, that archetype field, the one that Carl Jung talks about in psychology, like archetype energies. Uh, they are vocal sounds, yes. Pyth Pythagorean. Okay, we must have been taught. Oh, the numbers and okay, yes, and angles and yes, okay. Pythagorean chakras too. Nice. I feel affinities. Yes, the throat chakra. Like yes, I had talked about the throat and how we create with. Our, our world consciously or subconsciously with our throat chakra. So yeah, we want to do that as much consciously as we can. Yes, that's why it's important to say certain words correctly. The sounds are important. Yes. Okay. Uh, Narin, you say, nope, I never agreed. I, I wonder what you were referring to with that. And you can type that down below and I'll get to it. Okay. I love and have an affinity for gifts for languages. Well, Siren of the Void, I, I think maybe you're in the right place too, because out of all the language types of things in the world, I think that Tolkien brought forth a wonderful body of material that in its own way, he created, you know, the, the English mythology because there was none, but, but, here it is that um, we have, uh, you know, he actually made it really for the world, <laughs> I think. Um, I speak, therefore I am. Yeah, uh, it's true. And I would say that, again, I sing, therefore I am. It even adds more emphasis to that. Yep, vocal toning is the highest form of sound healing when it comes from within, and that is why singing is so powerful. Yes, you can take stunning sounds with the vocal cord. Yes, you can. I have a vision of me singing in a meditation. Oh, beautiful, yes. Um, I would say that you are definitely tuned in on the energies of this path because that's how creation happens here. Central theme, okay, Ian says, central theme of the trilogy, even the smallest can change the course of the future. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Okay, trilogy, meaning the trilogy, the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or do you mean a different trilogy? Like, do you mean the, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost trilogy of the Catholicism that because Tolkien was Catholic, 
uh, I'm curious what you mean by the trilogy there. So um, most powerful way to heal. Energy has a sound. We know this. Okay, throat make, okay, hang on. It, it just jumped. Hang on. I, I'm going to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Okay, here we are. Exactly. Song is of the most, song is of the most harmonious things we as humans can resonate with. Yes, peachy fruit. I, I agree with that. And I think that that's why many people find music so integral to their lives. Okay think that like subconsciously we probably know that that is our creative center also mm, i love harmony okay show okay uh i guess uh dave is in his document and we'll keep going here in a moment yeah just a second here okay no worries okay. You're, but you're back in it's good yeah uh okay, okay. And <clears throat> Uh, Native. Okay. So Ian says, oh, wait, let me back up. Uh, Cyrus of the Void says, love Native Americans somehow never fully explored their culture. Ian well, then says, Natives, Natives are tied to the land like the elves. The great spirit reminds me of Eru. So very interesting. Also, each each tribe has its own culture. I mean, people may mm -hmm. think they may, may speak of native culture, but you know, Choctaw culture, which I have Choctaw ancestors, is very different from Cherokees, which is very different from sure. Lakota, which well, you know, yeah. So they're all native, different. Native, <laughs> native, native tribes, maybe, and then yeah. like other ones may have a little variation. Right. I would say that the tribes of Europe also had that, and the tribes everywhere probably have you know, they're, they're going to have their own origin stories, but there's themes that go together. So like, I, I often thought about this when I was a crochet, um, like business person, and I made hats for people that were like co custom made, I made a ton of hats, but each hat still had, you know, a similar, you know, theme of like how I started it, even if I use different colors, and then it went this way, and it went that way, and it went the other way. So like if each of the hat bearers said, oh, here's the story of this hat, you know, and I made all of the hats, they're all different, but they're all, they all have the same core. And I think that that's kind of how I see mythology in the world, like that there's cores that are the same, but they're not the same mythologies. I think that they're different, you know, different creations, but they have similar themes because the process is similar. Um, Love Native American. Uh, this is interesting. This is an average when we tend to get together. Oh, wow, you have my attention there with him being a linguist. Yes, the present. I'm sorry. I keep, okay, I'm going to do it with my mouse here because I touch the screen and it freaks out. So I'm just going <laughs> to do it this way. We're um, both having problems. <laughs> I know. Technical. I know. <laughs> Okay, uh, the present, okay, Adam says the presence of the spirit is always here when we get together since even back in 2000, well, 2005, technically, that might have been a typo. All of our multiple yeah. online calls, okay, it's, it's true. It's, okay, it's na-ar-in, na-ar-in, okay, na, na okay, oh, are you talking about how you say your name, not in is that how you say it? Okay. Throat makes me think of manifesting generators in human design a little bit. Yes, because there is. Okay, for those of you who don't know what human design is a system that combines astrology, both kinds of astrology and the I Ching and several other things. And it's a really neat system, actually. I'm a projector and so is, so is Dave. I don't know what Dikendre is. Um, Alira is a generator. Um, when Kimber L was aboard, she is a generator also. I don't know if we have any manifesting generators in our group. And I don't think we have any manifestors or reflectors. So, but I know what manifesting generators are. Yes, I understand that energy. Um, I'm thinking of the vocal sounds. Aaron was a character I created as a child. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. 
Soulmate Healing says vocal toning is based on that. Other cultures call it mantra chanting. Yeah, it, yes, I would say the Eastern cultures particularly, yes. And there are ways to appease the gods through chanting as well as like mudras with the hand placements and you know also pujas when you do like prayer work on certain days for the certain planets and you know all of those kinds of things so yes he he nice ian says sometimes there are as many similarities as there are differences when you compare cultures i agree with that and Possibly, Ian. I mean, maybe some of them have like similar threads, and then the the, the um, story changed, you know, so that there's like two different stories that origin from the one story. But I think more often than not that it was separate creations, and then there was threads that can kind of ended up mixing together. And I think it's it's both processes happen simultaneously. Uh, Miss Jamie says human design. I must look into this. Yes, his name, the, the name of the man who developed it is Ra Uru Hu, I believe. So Ra is spelled R-A, Uru, U-R-U. So if you look up human design, Ra Uru, like you can, you can find some stuff and you can get your chart free online if you know your birth time and all of that, like how you do with an astrology chart. Um, Human design. Nordic culture has chanting called Galder. Yes, that's true. Yes. And and they do that with rune. They sing over the runes after they create the runes, like with the they they trace into the rune with the blood and other things, and then they sing them into existence. Is that correct? I, I think I've heard that before, Ian. You can let me know that. This reminds me of High Lung. Oh, I love that. Okay, are you talking about the band High Lung? I love them. They're amazing. Um, okay, I have really, I have really been missing out on this group, on your group. I'm loving him. Oh, are you talking about Dave, Siren of the Void? Just curious there. I, I might be taking that out of context. Jamie says, wonderful, thank you. Anna says, I think High Lung has a few golder chants. I, I would agree with that. I think that there is some serious magic in that band. Okay. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Galder... Jovian uh, Archive, yes. That's the one, uh, Siren of the Void. And you watched High Lung. Yes, I love High Lung. Yes, I know. High Lung is awesome. <laughs> wasn't uh, great? Wasn't, Go um, ahead, Dave. I, I was just going to ask, uh, wasn't uh, Galder... Uh, traditionally carved like onto rune uh, like state uh, short staffs or staves and, and and then they would they would do the the uh, intone magical rituals with that I mean that's that's what I've read I don't really know much about it I've never actually done it but I think so um, although it, it looks like and and I might be misunderstanding Ian correct me if I am wrong but I believe that the Galder aspect is the singing into life aspect where the carving and, and the blood into the rune and other things, I think that that has different names, but I could be mistaken. So I'm going to wait for Ian to answer that because I know he knows the answer to that. Um, oh, Pandora says, Craig's Galder. Yeah. Okay. And that's, I believe that that's one of the songs that Heilung sings. And Anna says, hang on, I'll check. Awesome. It's also a poetic form, but again, using the throat in order to speak or sing things like life force into them, you know, and that could also be used for not so good of purposes if, um, you know. Uh, Ian says that Galdir is the singing itself. It almost sounds like tribal singing. Are you talking about the throat oh, okay. singing that, like mm -hmm. the... Um, that the that is also practiced in the Mongolian chant uh, type of things because I've seen some of them like doing the throat singing. Yes, it's their best song. Oh, I I I love everything they do. I I can't pick a favorite. The number one male vocalist has Tibetan throat singing. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be right back. I'm stepping away for just a moment. Okay, sure, okay. no worries, Dikendre. We're we're gonna be right here. Excellent. 
Okay, Narin says, I disagree. I like the one where they sing in the runes literally. I can't remember the name of the song. Oh, are you talking about Narupo? Uh, yes. Yeah, there is. There a poetry form in Old Norse called Galdralag. And Pandora, that makes me think of the who. Yeah, there's there's a few there's a few Tibetan like there there's Tibetan like folk metal bands and all kinds of I mean there is like real metal like yeah the Who is actually really hard like hard music just yeah no Rupo that's what I thought too. Uh okay we went off tangent but I love it yeah we're we okay we're gonna rein it back in again uh, Dave are you familiar with uh, getting your document back? Because uh, yeah, we totally it, straight off it, topic, but in a way, actually, it's all related. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually up. Do I have to do the screen sharing thing yes. again? Okay. Yes, all right. I'm sorry. Let's yeah, see. I can't do that share, for you. Share you screen. To, yeah. Share screen, and it gives me a bunch of. Do you really want to share your screen? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking real quick while uh, we were talking. Uh, on the human design, I am a generator. You're a generator also? Yes, I pulled awesome. it up. Awesome. We need generators because me and Dave being projectors, it really sucks for us. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a generator. I got my mom luckily remembers when I was born. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, there's uh, ways to get your human design chart for free online and you can yeah. find out whether you're a generator you can find okay so there's many levels so there's manifester then there's manifesting generator and generator and they're very related and the manifester has the throat connected to one of the motors regular generators don't okay and then there are projectors and then there are reflectors reflectors hardly have anything like everything is really open and they're kind of the you know like the traveling monks of the world, you know, those kinds of people, only 1% of the population is a reflector. And so 70 something percent, I believe, is generators, including manifesting generators. Some 10% is uh, manifestors. And then there's about 20% that are projectors. And projectors oftentimes think that they're generators. And so what happens that we can really burn out our energy really quickly if we're not if we're not careful. You're a reflector, Adam. Okay, so that that explains so much about you. Okay, like so much, <laughs> so much. I get it now. Wow, excellent. Um, good to have a fellow generator. As I'm a manifesting generator, that would be from Siren of the Void. So yay, that's wonderful. Awesome. I gotta we need our manifesting away. generators. You guys, you guys have the patience problem. That's the only thing that uh, you guys need, right? Like the manifesting generators. Okay. You open it. Go ahead. Oh, or oh, oh yes, go ahead. Um, Leafa, that uh, is that we were talking about. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, now back to uh, the Einar singing. Uh, at, at this Indeed. point. Yeah, okay. Uh, but for a long while, they sang only each alone, or but few together, while the rest hearkened. For each comprehended only that part of, of the mind of Iluvatar from which he came. And in the understanding of the brethren, they grew but slowly. Yet ever as they listened, they came to deeper understanding and increased in unison and harmony. And I just made a little end note there at the very end of that, that... Uh, uh, Calanternio had mentioned that it it reminded her of uh, musicians tuning up for a concert. We're looking forward to hearing what you guys think about that. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments, uh, and we're still on human design and high lung songs <laughs> and singing in runes and all kinds of stuff, but. So, guys, do you think in the Ainu Lindale that um, the part where the the Ainu are, are singing their role, like that they're kind of practicing and and like warming up for the for the song when it's sung in that part of the Ainu Lindale? 
Yeah, because they haven't been given the great theme yet. They're just They had singing. not yet been yeah. given the great theme. They've been given a piece, their piece. Yeah. And they're kind of playing with it and listening to the others and their pieces playing with it, right? So that they hear everything and how intricate and everything it is but yeah it would be like you know oh i'm checking this out and then yeah so practicing tuning all of that and then yeah getting ready for the big performance that's how i saw it too i wondered if anybody else saw it that way go miss jamie manifesting generator mgs we we need you guys Uh, a calendar nail, it does make sense. Thank you, Peachy Fruit. Awesome. So there are other people that agree with that. And I realize we're at an hour. Uh, how far, wow. how, yeah, well, part of it was us getting our stuff together. Um, but let's keep going. Okay. <clears throat> and the next uh, paragraph is, <clears throat> And it came to pass that Iluvatar called together all the Arnur, and declared to them a mighty theme, unfolding to them things greater and more wonderful than he had yet revealed. And the glory of its beginning and the splendor of its end amazed the Ainur, so that they bowed before Iluvatar and were silent. And I have a little end note there that uh, Book of Lost Tales 1 says, so they bowed before Iluvatar and were and were speechless. So it's not just that they were silent, it's they were so astounded that like, oh my God, you know. Yes, this is, this is, this is uh, I cool. I think the word there could be floored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> floored. Just like awe, you know, A W E. Mm -hmm. Complete awe. Yeah, I would say that too. So, yeah, keep going. This is great. Okay. This is great. Then Iluvatar said to them, Of the theme that I have declared to you, I will now that ye make in harmony together a great music. And since I have kindled you with a flame imperishable, ye shall show forth your powers in adorning this theme, each with his own thoughts and devices, if he will. But I will sit and hearken and be glad that through you, great beauty has been wakened into song. And I have two end notes there. The flame imperishable, um, that's a rather, that's a long, um, footnote that do you want me to read it or or do you want the 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 people to um read? well they may want to read it but um okay is the gist of it so i understood that the flame imperishable was likened to in catholicism what is the holy spirit like out of the trinity of the father son and the holy spirit yeah the uh, flame imperishable is is akin to in Catholicism, being the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, Tolkien actually defines it in it, in place there. He says, "This act, this is this is actually already glimpsed in the in the Ainulindale. He's he's actually writing from a, another text, and that's why he's referring to the Ainulindale, in which reference is made to the flame imperishable. This appears to mean the creative activity of Uru, in some sense distinct from or within him." of which things could be given a real and independent, though derivative and created existence. This flame and flame imperishable is sent out from Eru to dwell in the heart of the world, and the world then is on the same plane as the Ainur, and they can enter into it. This is not, of course, the same as the re-entry of Eru, Eru into Arda to defeat Melkor. It refers, it refers rather to the mystery of authorship, of which the author, while remaining outside and independent of his work, also indwells within it and on its derivative plane below that of his own being as a source and guarantee of its being. So that's kind of a, that's a, that's a, that's a really important uh, concept there that the, the, the concept, like he says, the mystery of authorship, you know, you, 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 you make a work, you're not, you, you, you're, you're greater than the work in, in, in the sense that you made it, but you also are in a sense inside of it, you know? Yeah. Um, now, like, let's, let's kind of stretch that a little bit. So would it be then, because in the Legendarium, I understand in the eyes of Iluvatar, Eru Iluvatar, that, you know, the Ainur 
Okay. And thereby mm -hmm. the Maiar, the Valar, you know, all of the, right, you know, right. I know we're not at that section yet, but, and the, then elves and men. And then because of, um, you know, an exception to the rule, the dwarves, because of Iule, like just being a workaholic Vala, right. <laughs> um, that each of them has an equal, you know, place in the eye of Iluvatar. So would you say that each of us also have like maybe a piece of that same flame imperishable within us and possibly like in our heart chakra? Yeah, it's 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 very similar to the Gnostic concept of the uh 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 plerma that 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 you know the 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 indwelling essence, the indwelling spark of of uh, divinity. You know, it's it's quite similar to that. I it's not I it's not identical, but it's similar. Go ahead, Kendra, and then I have a question um, from Narin that's important, but you go ahead I first. I was say that I would agree with David from what um, I've read in the uh, Silmarillion especially. Like, when the dwarves were created, they were originally lifeless, and it wasn't until Eru breathed basically the flame into them. Exactly. That they yeah. became alive, so all of the creation that is on Arda has a piece of the flame imperishable in them in order to be alive. Okay, the important question is, Naren says, <clears throat> excuse me, so what then does it mean that Melkor seeks the flame? That's a really good question. Dave, I'm going to let you handle that. He was confused. He thought that... Uh the flame was an external thing like a like a great diamond or something that he could go out there and 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 collect and therefore uh you know uh bend to his will and start creating stuff with it uh he didn't really well, realize interestingly he had the brightest light out of, you know because one of the things that, about melkor that we learn is that he was the brightest yeah and yeah he was look what he was one of the know, greatest the consuming, yeah yeah like so what was the, you know, this, this great, so in a way it was like, he didn't even recognize his own light. Exactly. And, and yeah. started looking outward from himself and nothing is outward. And in the process of doing so, and, and just hell bent on it. Okay. Ended up later in the stories, as we'll learn, losing that light and not having a piece of it anymore. Yeah. And it, it and so thereby doesn't have the flame imperishable. And and and, and yes, uh, Melkor uh, was the brightest when when he first was, and I think that that's what ended up happening. It's a very Luciferian reference. Right, right, right. And, yeah. and it, in fact, in um, in Melkor's case, at the very end, he expended so much of his power in uh, inspiring other creatures to do evil and then putting power into other things to create physical devices and so forth that he hardly had any left. That's why That's the right. Valar well, at the Arian end were so helped. easily able to capture yeah. him. Yeah. Arian <laughs> also helped that like, be right. all the way finished. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, you know, later Iule and, you know, like they put him in the void and we'll talk about the void too. Right. That's very important. We'll definitely address that. And Adam had to leave. So we see you later, Adam. Okay. Um, let's see. Soul fire, Miss Jamie says. Uh, Melkor was the brightest. Yes. Um, okay. Naren says, but didn't he get near it or something when he left once or was chased away? I cannot remember. I'm skipping way ahead here. I'm sorry, I don't understand that. I, I don't either. I'm trying to think of like what he's talking about. The only thing that I ever thought that he was chasing was Arian. Yeah, it, that is true. I yeah. mean, because yeah. she had her own yeah. light, it was the sun, you know, yeah. the sun yeah. light, because she was the steers woman of the Maya, or of you know, that steers the sun. And so, yeah, and and she had a fiery uh, nature. So yeah, uh, yeah. Originally, I mean, that's uh, the only that's the only thing that I knew that Melkor actually chased. Yeah, uh, and she was originally a, a spirit of fire, similar to the Balrogs, just not uh, corrupted like they were. Correct. Anymore. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. But didn't get. Okay. All right. Makes me think of extroverts giving light away to others. Don't 
don't mind the tangent. Okay. And actually being an extrovert is not a problem by itself. I do think that um, when we are not paying attention to our inner body while we're doing external stuff at the same time, I think that there's a balance. I think that there's times to be open and, and flowing outward, and then there's times to receive and go inward. So I think that there's this demonization of the word extrovert, like that there's a demonization of the word masculine demonization of the word, you know, like all of these things nowadays in the spiritual community. And really what it is, is that we're finding balance with all of these things. Um, so it's not a bad thing to be an extrovert and it's not a bad thing to be an introvert. Okay. It's okay to even like lean one way or the other, but I think what's important is to be able to find our own balance. Okay. That's what we're striving for. We're not striving for perfection. We're striving for balance here. Okay. I hope that that answers that. Um, let's see. Peachy Fruit says, perhaps that is why he hated humans most of all. He meaning, he meaning Melkor or he meaning a different person. Uh, because they were a reflection of himself in that they were more prone to jealousy and desire seeking external power instead of looking within. Okay, Mel yes, Melkor. That might be the case, um, but it also might be that he might have been jealous also of the gift of death. Because think about Melkor, he has to live eternity in the void, right? Humans have the gift the gift of death. And by that, we mean that they're mortal and we go directly to Iluvatar when we die. Okay. And we might like maybe Iluvatar once we get there, like if we want to say, Hey, can we hang out with the elves? Like maybe we'll get to go to Valinor enough, but all of us are human. Okay. At least by meat suit and all of that kind of stuff right now. And so we go directly to Iluvatar according to the legendarium. Now, what happens after that? Nobody knows. Okay. And this is why the path that we have is panentheistic rather than pantheistic. Panentheism says that all is one and one is all. So that like Eru is, you know, any one of the Valar, any one of the Maiar, et cetera and that everything is goes back in. So all is one, uh, one is all. And so then there's Greek pantheons, there's, um, you know, Roman pantheons, there's Celtic pantheons, there would be um, a Nor Norse pantheon, although they're a polytheism. So I'm not sure if that's the right word for describing that particular pantheon. Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe Ian knows the answer to that. Maybe it's a polytheon or something like that. But what I'm saying is that there is a mystery that we do not know with Eru, Iluvatar. We don't know everything about the great theme. He is the only, like he, she, you know, the one is the only thing that really knows, even though everything is connected to it but there is a mystery still. So that's the, the reason that we are panentheistic. Just thought I would mention that to everybody. Okay, indeed I agree, Lisa. Yes, Melkor, most sad and tragic for him, Melkor. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, and we are not at the end of the song of Ea. So he's gonna still be in the void a little longer, I think. So I'm going to, okay, Naren says, I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, I think that, I think we're caught up, Dave. Let's continue. Okay, uh, at the very end, uh, at, at, the, at the end of, this, of the, this paragraph here where uh, Iris says uh, that, uh, you know, something hearken and be glad that through you great beauty has been awakened into song. There's a, an earlier reference from uh, Book of Lost Tales 1 where it, it goes into a, a, a bit more detail that, the the theme that that uh, he, he showed you know that he he propounded to them he you know planned for them it says uh, I, I'm, 
I, I related as it were only an outline. I have not filled in all the empty spaces, neither have I recounted to you all the adornments and things of loveliness and delicacy whereof my mind is full. It is my desire now that ye make a great and glorious music and a singing of this theme, and seeing as I have taught you much and set brightly the secret fire within you, that ye exercise your minds and powers in adorning the theme to your own thoughts and devising. So it, it, that it's the same idea, but it, it's, it's expressed a little differently. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. In that, okay, in I'm, typing, I'm typing a comment. Okay. We had, uh, we had a comment that says, I still feel Melkor is similar to humans in that they both fell into the external traps due to the desire to know the answers to the most of the mysteries. Yes. I also said, absolutely, but he could have liked them, but he didn't. So isn't that interesting how many people are exactly what they hate? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, oh, it's, bye, uh... Sarah. Thank you for popping by. Um, yes. Meaning that there are a lot of, I guess, human traits that are, you know, something that uh, Melkor, like the very thing that he sees in humans that he despises himself yeah, it's, it's, has and and that's a very a that's a very human thing in a way like for us to like oh my that person over there they're really not nice but then like they never look at themselves and see how not nice they are, you know so we don't like to look at ourselves and go oh man i i suck you know yeah, we don't really the, like to do the, that one of the uh principal references with regard to Melkor on humans. This is, is uh, he says uh, uh, that he has ever feared and hated them, even those that, those that served him. So that gives you an yeah. idea right there. <laughs> now, isn't that interesting? Yes, and she says Melkor was envious of it and sought it in the void, but the flame was only with Eru. It was with Iluvatar beginning and later Iluvatar set it or an aspect of it at the center of Arda. Yes, that is true. Yes. Okay. Okay. I made up that he got close to it. Sorry. Oh, no, you, well, you didn't make it up. But, and, and by the way, it is so easy to like have misunderstandings about the stories and then reread it again and go, oh, okay. And have new understandings and unfoldments of these stories. And we're hoping that this series will have an opportunity to do that, especially for the teachers, because um, I know that this is a public class tonight, but for the teachers, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more reined in when we have it, you know, just with the teachers and it'll be like a little more on topic and things like that. But it, it is it is interesting that we're exploring how we are different in all of the other talks about the Aino Lindale, because we're, we're comparing all of these to the experience of our own spiritual path. Okay. Men were also envious of the elves' immortality. That's true, Ian. Yes, envy is a powerful thing. Narin says, humans can out Melkor. He feared Melkor, he feared. Them. Okay, uh, can you say that again? We're not really sure what you're saying. Uh, humans can out Melkor. Mel oh, I see. Out, like meaning hyphenate, out hyphenate Melkor, Melkor. In other words, we can outdo the envy and all of those things. I'm I'm not so sure about that. I don't know if we can outdo Melkor because Melkor was the one really with the most, in a way, the most light at the beginning of the creation, of the beginning of Ea, okay? And it was only because of the intention to like, in day, what Dave was talking about, to look outward from that and think that they have to have things outside of what they are instead of what they are inside. Yeah, it, yeah it's also uh, relevant to this part of the discussion here. It's it's interesting the um, the definition of evil within um, the legendarium. There in uh, Morgoth's Ring, uh, uh, History of Middle Earth, Volume Ten, it's it, it defines evil. Uh, Tolkien defines evil as. A tendency, evil, or a tendency to aberration from the design of Iru. So that's 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 a real for a, a technically minded person like me. That's that that's like the definition of evil: a tendency toward aberration from from the design. You know. Wow. 
That's amazing. That is definitely clear. And in, and in fact, I, I guess that that also, we could also say that in, um, not to equate it with the Christian sin, but like mm -hmm. sin is actually described as, as going against God, right? Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, on that topic, uh, Dave, are we at an appropriate place to talk about um, Eru and then the God of Christianity? Are we at a, an appropriate place for that yet, or should we wait? Uh, let's see here. I'm just, I'm just thinking ahead. Okay. It, it, any anywhere within um, the Inuendo, really, but if you want to do it now, that's that's okay. fine. Okay, I mean, it's at issue. So yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk about in the stories of what is the Christian God, if we go to the origin stories of those through the Shimmerian documents that were discovered, we learn that the God Enlil, E-N-L-I-L, -E -L, is the God of the Christian God, okay? And there's brothers and, you know, like other family members. So this idea of the Christian God being the only one, like if we go back to the origins, it's not really the only one, okay? Eru is the source. Like there is no, you know, like upper parent, you know, sister, brother, everything. Eru is the one. So the way that I look at it, for me, okay, and I'm not Christian, but I think that Eru is in a way like a like in a way above the Christian God, okay, from my viewpoint. And it's only because I look at the origins of where the biblical texts pick up what is quote God. And if you look at the parallels in the Shamarian text, they are of a brother in a family, you know. <laughs> So just on the FYI on that, um, there might be some people that are going to be angry about that with me. I'm sorry <laughs> if you're Christian and I say that your God is like, you know, sorry, I don't mean I don't mean any disrespect um, because you can you can pray to that God. It's fine. But I like Eru and the concept of Eru. But it's very interesting that the elves in the stories had connections to the Valar. They knew about Eru, they honored Eru, but they weren't like, Eru was not accessible to them where the Valar were accessible because they had contracted to be in Ea with the Arda and the creation and steward that. And then the elves also did, you know, cre like did the stewardship of that. Okay, humans, not so much. Humans did not have that stewardship um, where, you know, we can kind of see that in the world. But the, so humans have a lot of freedom, but we also have a lot of things that we kind of screw up on. And then I guess that we die just to, even if we save it from ourselves, maybe. I, I'm not really sure. Um, I know that it's all in the design. Let me look here and see. It says Enki is also known as Ea. That is correct, Ian. Go to my body graph. The site is reliable. Oh, with for human design. Okay. I And then Siren of the Void says, I see Eru as the universe. Really, I see a similarity. I do too. Yes, the one, the all that is. Yes. Ian says, more like the transcendental God of the Gnostics, while the demiurgical aspect are not just negative. Yeah, very, very well said. I agree, Siren, excellent. And that's from Peachy Fruit. Um, Dekindre, did you have anything to pop in with? On uh, which part? Uh, it, well, anything, but um, do you see um, a resonance between uh, what would be the Christian God versus uh, Eru in the Legendarium? Not that they're similar in any way, no. Um, yeah. Because, like you're saying, and even in the Bible, there's uh, two scriptures in particular in Genesis where there is a very clear reference in Christianity. Most Christians miss it, in fact. But there are two references that creation was not done by one being. 
Um, in Genesis, there's a scripture where he talks about that God said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. And then in Psalms, it talks about where he like joined the divine council as like leader of all of the other deities. So in that aspect, it's the, the Christian Bible actually has references that nothing was done by just him. That's interesting. I, I always wondered about that when I was a little kid. I was raised Lutheran, so, you know. Well, I, I, yeah. And when you get into that, a lot of the pastors I've debated with always love to use the concept of, well, the, the Holy Trinity, mm -hmm. the God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There's a slight flaw with that concept in that um, until I think it was the Council of Nicaea or right around there in the 1500s, Mm -hmm. The concept of triple divinity didn't mm -hmm. exist. That so is correct. Prior to the yes. 1500s, there was no tri Trinity form God. So he couldn't have been referring to the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and all of that. That's it very had interesting. There have been yeah. other beings. Okay, I'm reading comments here. Elohim is plural. Plus, the archaeology says that they were originally polytheists. That is that is correct. Okay. Oh, and then you guys are still talking about all of the human design stuff. And oh, meaning the Semites. Yes. Yes, oh. Ian. Thank you for your input. And one night, I would like for you to be on the stage like how Dekindra is tonight. But, you know, we'll give you a break and, you know, you can do that when you're ready. How's that? Oh. Um, go ahead, Dave. I was just going to say, uh, for my part, I don't know much about the culture of ancient Sumer, except for the uh, epic of Gilgamesh. Being a tiger therian, I'm naturally attracted to anything that has an animal man in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? <clears throat> yeah. Excellent. Okay, well, let's uh, let's continue here. It doesn't, I'm, I, we're slowing down on the comments a little bit, okay. so let's keep going. Okay, uh, the next chapter, uh, next paragraph rather. Uh, then the voices of the Ainur, like unto harps and lutes and pipes and trumpets and viols and organs and like unto countless choirs singing with words, began to fashion the theme of Iluvatar to a great music. And a sound arose of endless interchanging melodies woven in harmony that passed beyond hearing into the depths and into the heights. And the places of the dwelling of Iluvatar were filled to overflowing and the music and echo of the music went out into the void, and it was not void. Never since have the Ainur made a music like to this music, though it has been said that a greater still shall be made before Iluvatar by the choirs of the Ainur and the children of Iluvatar after, after the end of days. Then the themes of Iluvatar shall be played aright and take being in the moment of their utterance. For all shall then understand fully his intent in their part, and each shall know the, the comprehension of each, and Iluvatar shall give to their thoughts the secret fire, being well pleased. There's a lot to pack That's in that. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Let's start yeah. with the void, because that was one of the things that I think that it's a very interesting thing that he talked about the void not being void. Let's go back to that. Yeah, I, I made a whole diagram. I actually found one online. Oh, and let's, modified let's look it a little and see bit. what you made. It's down a reference 10. Awesome. And I, I label each section and tell what it is. There, let's see here. Okay. There we are. Hopefully you, everybody okay. can see it. Now, is this from Legendarium? These are the yeah, words it's Legendarium? Actually, okay. actually, what, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, actually what this is, it's originally a token drawing, but the token drawing was done in pencil and then uh, stuck in a drawer for many years and kind, got kind of cruddy and muddy. And, and so, so this, this person, uh, this, this, this artist on a Spanish forum basically re-rendered re it accurately. And he, 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 he left out a few things that don't have a lot to do with the, the actual cosmogony. Uh, so, but this is all the essentials here. And this is, and I put, uh, I just, I, I put in the, the only thing I modified was Ava Kuma at the, you know, at the very um, lower left and upper right. 
uh, everything out, which is a concept that's there, but it wasn't in his original drawing. But uh, so, I mean, it was in Tolkien's drawing, but it wasn't in the the guy who redid it. So, and this is you want me to you want me to read these or okay, we... yeah. Well, and the part that's the void, yeah. Like we need to know the realms, I guess. So vista meaning that's the sky. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Umbar is the earth, like yeah, art of the that? earth. Yeah, okay. yeah, um, and, and there, there's, there's a, there's a distinction actually between Arda and Ambar. Ambar actually means the habitation where we. Oh, I see. Where, where we live and all, all the animals live. Uh, Arda actually, um, if you look into, into some of the, um, the deeper materials in the, in the Morgoth's Ring, which is uh, History of Middle Earth, Volume Ten. You'll see it actually means the solar system. So, and, oh, very interesting. Wow. And Ambar is the earth, the living earth. With it, 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 it's, it's considered, you know, the elves were very focused upon life. So Ambar habitation is the living earth, basically. So that's, and so, but it also refers, it, there's, a, there's a blending of concepts. Ambar and Arda are sometimes used almost interchangeably, and that's actually in mentioned in several places in uh, Christopher's notes. But um, anyway, so you have Ambar the Earth, and then um, uh, uh, below that there are these there are these these lines, and those are um, <clears throat> the 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 roots roots of the world, but the the the, the lines represent veins of the world where 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 Umo's uh, water and his his oh. his power is able to influence uh, the, the 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 places where otherwise where you know if it weren't for him Melkor would have complete control over that area but Umo had a, 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 that that's in that's in the the, uh, the Silmarillion in several places uh, if you remember those those sections but. So that's Umo's water basically coming up. Now, now you got to remember this is a, a schematic diagram. It's not, you know, intended to be like a map. It's it's intended to be like a uh, like a, a a general plan, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Before we go further, uh, Siren of the Void says, "What is the difference again between Ambar and Arda? Are they words from different languages?" No, they're not words from different languages. I'm not a linguist, uh, but if you th there is a there is a site. Let's see here. I, it actually might be. It, in it's my okay. Book. I did type up above that Arda is the solar system. Wow, mm -hmm. Ambar is Earth. Very interesting. So that that is at least in the comments for people to refer to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but it does it does seem that there is a lot of interchange between Ambar and Ardida, and and then in later works, it seems like Ardida is usually the word that is used yeah. for Earth. Uh, especially during uh, the war, Arda became used more. So, but it, you know it, what? I just thought of this. So, Ardida also means like the sky above. Like you know, we were talking about the sky and then heaven. Right, like mm -hmm. so, it, it's all kind of inclusive. Where Ambar might be like the surface of the Earth, like the, it, yeah, the crust, yeah, the, if you will. Yeah, the 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 crust where okay. where all, all all of us living beings are. You know, uh, you know, humans, elves, uh, you know, tigers, uh, plants, you know, oak trees, whatever. You know, right? Okay, <laughs> okay. And then so Vista is the sky, and then it looks like, okay, to me, is it Vaya that is the heaven, like above, but it also surrounds well, and goes yeah, underneath? Yeah, that's a little different. Yeah, this is these are these concepts are very are somewhat different than modern concepts. V Vista is very similar. That's what we would now call the troposphere. In other words, uh, the the area the, the the immediate atmosphere with breathable air. Okay. Uh, that's, okay. That's, that's okay. Just, uh, Ilman now was conceived as above Vista, where the where the stars were. Because think of it, to an ancient observer oh. on on the surface of the Earth, you don't know exactly how far they are. You know. Uh, right. Right. No, that's true. You know, you you, you have no real no. Uh, you know, you don't have have idea any real idea if they're more than, you know, t t ten miles up or. 
you know, 10 trillion miles. You, you, right. So you that's E-O-N-N? E-I-O-N-E-N? Yeah. Okay. And then the one yeah. on the right side is called, can you read that aloud? Uh, which which one the, do you the mean? The word that is on the right-hand side of Eelnen. Eelnen is on the left side. Mm -hmm. What word is um, to the right of Vista? Oh, the, the, oh, the, those are those are both um, Eelnen. They're just oh, they're, they're just, Il okay. It, yeah. I can't tell on my little tiny screen. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. Yeah. Then so now here's something interesting because in ancient astrology it has been thought of by the ancients that we had like some kind of a black like film around and that holes were punched into that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that and the that light came from like one source that was shining through all the stars right and that's yeah. what that's what via is via is a uh, is the uh, light oh wow a, no via is a dark fluid uh that oh is that uh, source is that source then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, uh, it, it, and then, um, and then moving further out, Kuma is is the void, uh, I see. but it, but it's still the void within our universe. Uh, the void without is Ava Kuma. That's that's ah. out, that's outside the universe. That's the the outer dark, the timeless darkness. The you, you know I'm go into its various terms at, at the end there. So in other but, words, the, the Kuma is actually, but it takes space though. Yeah, yeah, like that within, would be. Within Aya and, and it's just outside of like yeah, the creation Kuma, piece. Right, Kuma would be uh, either interstellar or even intergalactic space. Okay. Whereas whereas Ava Kuma is outside the universe in, like entirely. Like entirely, which yeah. would mean outside of the whole creation. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Very, very great diagram there. Thank you for sharing that, Dave. That's pretty awesome. And going back to the, to the sentence there, it talks about the void. Now, now Kuma, Kuma itself means void, but the way the sentence is, is, is written, and considering that uh, the universe hadn't been created yet, we're not exactly sure uh, whether, you know, what with it going out into the void and it was it was not void was referring to Kuma or Ava Kuma or if they were pretty much the same thing at that point because there was no universe yet, you know. So Okay, here's an excellent question. So Peachy Fruit says, so Eru exists both in and outside of Ava Kuma? My feeling is yes, but yes, what, what I, do I would you say feel? so. I would say so too. Yeah. But not in Aya. In other words, Aya has the void, Kuma has Vaya, right. has Ambar, has Vista, has Ilnen, right. but but not Avakuma. That Avakuma would be outside of Aya to me. Yes, yeah, that's outside the universe, you know. Right. Which right. is a kind of an odd concept uh, anyway. Fruit, but... I hope that answers your yeah. question. Uh, do you have anything to say, Dekindre, before we go on with, to the next uh, part? No, I'm good. Definitely. Okay, excellent. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on Peachy Fruit. Hopefully she got that piece. Um, go ahead, Dave. Okay, I got to go back up here. Let's see here. All right. Okay, uh, we talked about uh, the void. The echo of the music went out into the void, and it was not void. In, in other words, it was so great that it created a vibration. Um, and actually, I meant to put this in. Maybe I'll, I'll put it in just later or something in case anybody wants to come back to this document at some later point. There is a, a wonderful creation um, graphic. Now, people didn't like the, the movie that it came from, but there was uh, a movie called Noah, which has a wonderful, that came out, I believe, in 2014. It has a wonderful creation sequence to it. And uh, it's it, 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 especially when it, when it starts, it's like uh, the breath of the creator fluttered over the surface of of the void, and it has a a, a whole uh, basically cr uh, big bang, spontaneous symmetry breaking, all the galaxies forming sort of thing. It's a it's a really cool cool video. Uh, I've I've taught my daughter Eleanor about how the universe came into being with that very video. You know, so it, wow. it it 
it it works whether you are are purely scientific and don't believe there's any such thing as gods or spirits or anything like that, or it, or if you do believe in 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 something, it works Is it on YouTube? either way. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's um. Great. We'll uh, add that link when you find it. We'll add that link to the body okay. of the text yeah. on YouTube, and we'll also yeah. put it in comments for people okay. so that they can reference it later. That's great. Right. Thank you. Right. Excellent. Okay. It looks like peachy fruit does get it. So um, let's let's keep going. Okay. And well, that's pretty much it. it the the last couple of sentences just refer to of what's going to happen in. Um, in the future, never since have the Einar made any music like to this music, though it has been said that the greatest still shall be made before Luvatar by the choirs of the Einar and the children of Luvatar after the end of days. Uh, the children of I Luvatar, of course, are elves and men. So, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I hear about like star seeds, all kinds of, you know, like there's, again, we're talking about parallels of, and I'm bringing them all together. Mm -hmm. we, we hear about so much that it's like we're in a time right now in this in this like right now 2020 3d you know action here that the spiritual viewpoint of what we are going through in a 3d way to my knowing has never had anything like this and that to me aligns with that part of the legendarium where it's like never before has this ever been sung like this and yet right. there is mm -hmm. going to be something greater in the future. That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, we're, really we're all kind of like, even on a, like, you know, kind of a suspension of like, oh, what's going to happen? Like we're all watching our own movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, yeah. But we yeah. have a lot more feeling again with these meat suits. Right. I mean, it's like, it's sometimes really fun navigate and sometimes really difficult. Um, you know, this is not, I mean, you know, we, we think about, you know, earth being, you know, a playground for the fairies. Like, you know, we were talking about like with people that are like, what are the fairies? And the fairies mm -hmm. are older than Aya, meaning older than the creation. And they see earth as a playground and play around. Okay. So right. they, they think it's a blip on the screen, you know, right. They, they, don't get it right they think oh like fun and what have you on uh, their own thing going on so lots of people ask you know are fairies elves no I at least according to the legendarium the right. elves and men were created by iluvatar in Aya. okay for the purpose of Aya and for their purpose meaning you know the elves had their purpose humans had their purpose the dwarves you know thank you ayule have their purpose the Maiar, right. the Eldar, I'm sorry, Maiar, the Valar, definitely the Valar, have their purpose. Okay, and even Melkor has his purpose. Okay, that's, I guess that's what I wanted to stress again, you know, that, that whole part of like we had to fit in that destruction in order for mm -hmm. creation to continue right. its roundabout way. And so that's what Melkor's, in a way, I mean, I see it as Melkor's job was that, okay, to resonate with that destructive element. And, and think about how he did the destruction. He started singing discordantly. And have uh -huh. any of you ever heard music that at the same volume, okay, one song totally different than the other song and you're like i cannot listen to both of these at one time you're either going to go to one song or the other song yeah okay exactly. and then mm -hmm. and then if you turn up the volume on one of the songs okay this one you know like the one that's loud it's like rah, right uh, it'll be harder and harder to hear that quieter song okay so things start like changing to those other songs. So this is what was happening in the singing of the songs. And there's three songs that created Aya, okay, from the stories. And, and maybe some of you guys have not yet read the uh, uh, 
I knew Lindeley and the Valaquinta and, and actually the Silmarillion because um, this is one of the things that, so we learn that Ea and their Bordida all were, this universe all sang into existence through the movement of three songs, okay? And we are said to be in the third song now. So it has not ended, okay? The, the age of the Valar, the age of elves, and then the age of men, right? That's the, that's the third unfoldment of the song. And then it's going to end. And then there is a future, like we see this from the legendarium, there's a future music that's planned that's even better. It's even greater. It's even crazier. It's even like, oh my gosh, right? And it's kind of special that we are bringing about the elven path at a time that I think that we are waking up the humans that are like, hey, I need to know about this to be the humans that are participating in the next song. I think the elves and men, because elves are in Amon, which is the blessed realm right now, okay? And humans are, you know, we are like, we all go to a Lutar when we die and, and stuff like that. But I have a feeling that all of us are gonna, it, like dwarves everything. We're all gonna sing that next song. And we're, we're all gonna be imparted with that little piece that is ours that we then sing into the next creation. It's going to be exciting, I think. Exactly. It'll be exciting. So, um, are there any other references after the void and some of the other things that you wanted to talk about tonight? I know that we're getting on time. Uh, you know, some of our East Coast folks are like getting really tired. So, Yes, soulmate um, healing. Yes, the whole point is that we have to come together. And Jamie, Miss Jamie says, wow, beautiful. Oh. With Peachy Fruit says, yes, humans with, oh, uh, okay, let me read Peachy Fruit and I totally want to hear. Okay. Yes, humans with elven spirits are awakening humans with human spirits so that we can all evolve into a more harmonious future. I would, I would agree with that. And some of us have elven spirits. Some of us maybe don't. Okay. Um, I do agree that we need to awaken anybody that is aligned with love in order for singing that song and in whatever way they access it. And the reason for our path is not so that we can be elitist pricks. Okay. We are here on this path so that we can bring humans elven wisdom because elves have a tendency to learn because they have this immortality thing and they learn a lot of stuff. Okay. And they also have the stewardship of the earth piece that they have. And even though they are in Amon now, um, well, at least most of them that we'll get to that part later, but the job I think of the elves was to steward the planet, but then it became like not the age of elves anymore. It's the age of men. The age of men has a lot more freedom attached to it because men, you know, have the gift of death. Okay. And then yes, they, they're more easily corruptible. We learn that from the stories too, but how special Olympics is it that we could be so you know, inundated with, you know, the desire for power and all of this stuff. And yet we are still coming together and creating an elven wisdom, spiritual path. How much Special Olympics is that? Like gold medal stuff, right? <laughs> that's like that's like Baron, you know, kicking the tail of, you know, where he's like just the human, but yet look at how amazing he was as a human. So the human potential is so high. It is so high. And the reason that this path is not about disowning your humanness. So if that is why you are here, you need to leave. We are not about making humanness go away. That is part of your shadow work that you need to own your humanness. Okay. We are not, we're not going to go there. We are all about embracing all that we are as human, but we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of layers of trauma that we are getting through part of which could be explored through 
the workings of the songs that were sang into existence and that we are on the third song of the, you know, like read it in the stories, the crazy ups and downs, everything. This is the age of men. Okay, we are, we are at crunch time. This is like final exam time, okay? We are all trying to figure out how to navigate this, all of this energy and do it in the way that when the end of the third song comes, we're ready for our part in the next piece of music. I hope that you guys, please own your humanness, but we all need to heal those, those weird places in our humanness also. And hopefully Elven Wisdom can help us do that. Well, okay. and that kind of uh, goes into what I was going to touch on as well. Well, and actually, and, I was going to get back to you. <laughs> um, if I could, yes. I used to think entirely of just being Elven sold. And in the research I've done over the years, it's more than that in that, at least for me, coming from a Swedish background where my grandfather and my relatives were all from Sweden. Um, it's really interesting that in Sweden, there is a concept that if you trace your family lineage far enough, they actually have a thing where human and elven are one and the same, that, they're, that the elves at some point bred in. So you actually can end up not only owning your humanity and merging it with your elven, but it is the concept that you are elven in physical. It doesn't make you better. It simply is part of, like, every Swedish family can more or less trace their lineage to elven ancestors. Actually, that That's makes sense math, math, mathematically, too. I'm, I'm just saying, uh, and, over, the, over the generations. <laughs> right, right. So if you read, like, Lawrence Gardner's work, like Realm of the Ring Lords, or Nicholas Devere's work, uh, Dragon Legacy, they touch on that very much that it doesn't make us elitist, but that there is on a lot of us a physical aspect beyond just a soul aspect. And it ties into the legendarium when you consider that there's an aspect of the legendarium that the soul of the elves is tied to Arda. And when we die, when an elf dies, they actually will return to almost a purgatory or a limbo and then reintegrate back into the world when they're needed. You're, you're talking about in the legendarium when the elves, if like for instance, because they're immortal. So if they die, it's probably a battle, right? Okay. Well, and then example, sometimes they can the reenter field. as that elf again, like when they come back. At least that soul, not so much that physical body, but they will, there, there was an aspect in the Silmarillion somewhere, I can't recall at the moment, where the elves, their souls are actually tied to Arda. And so they will- That is correct, like, yes. Yeah, that's the whole- the battlefield, they're immortal yes. as long as they, their immortality though, isn't related so much to their physical body as it is to their soul body. And that, that was a whole uh, that can come. I back would agree with that. Although they did have an immortal physical body, according to the legends, and it just so became the time that it wasn't the time for elves anymore, and they were all called to Amon. Okay. Um, I'd like to make. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry, I was just. I'd like to make two points after you're you're through speaking. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so definitely. And actually, I mean, I actually also believe in humans having elven DNA, meaning it, it's possible for all humanity to have elven DNA. And maybe even if it's just a little piece of that, that we're, we're, cause we're in the age of men, right? Like the, the vibration exactly. is very different. It is here, like, you know, the vibration is of that third song the elves could not deal with this anymore. They had to go to Amon, okay? But I believe that humans had to really dial back our DNA of elvenness, if you will, so that we could even live in this dimension and do the work that we're doing in the third song. But we're getting ready for that next song. That's what I have... That's what I believe that the Elven Path, Tia Eldelieva, the Elven Path, 
is doing. We are preparing souls that are called and waking up and saying, hey, I'm either elven soul. I'm, I'm part elven DNA. I'm, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and to me, it doesn't matter what you are. If you're elven no, in here, does. that is all I care about. <laughs> okay. If you want to witness the elven wisdom and embody that into your being. Okay. And, and it's possible you guys are living proof of that. I've actually been watching some of you lately. Okay. And I see the elven energy like opening up in you, like since you've been involved in the path and, and some of you are members and some of you aren't, but I actually like, I see a different glow about you. Like when I see, you know, like just, you know, you guys message me, Hey, Colin Tierney L and all of this. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know? And it's like, it's like sparkly. I can't describe it. Okay. It's like, you guys are getting woken up because all of us are getting woken up and, you know, back in 2005, Dave and I were waking and, and you know, Ian and, you know, some other people, you know, Adam, um, you know, we had a whole bunch of people involved with us. And I think that even they will circle back around at some point, but we're all getting called to sing the song when it comes time. And I think that this is why this work is so important. And I'm so glad you guys are here and thank you again for coming. Dave, take it away. Uh, uh, the, the, the blended ancestry is a central concept in the legendarium It's referred to as the line of Luthien. Um, and uh, there's a, a close quote that refers to um, uh, Dior, uh, Baron and Luthien's son, uh, that, that he was of threefold race, uh, of the Eldar, of men, and of the Maiar of the Blessed Realm, because, you know, Luthien's yeah, mother Luthien was, was, of course, Melian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, of course, continued. And um, in the Lord of the Ring era, Aragorn was was referred to as being of the line of line of Luthien. It's a, it's a it's a central concept, and um, and then the other thing I was going to mention, uh, what uh, De Kindry mentioned earlier about um, about the different souls. I, I, I believe what what you might be thinking of is the um, after after Muriel uh, Finwy's uh, first wife died of her own will and decided not to be become to return to her body there was a big debate of the valar about you know what 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 exactly what's what's the relation of, of, of these children of um Iluvatar, their souls to the physical body do we have to sh should we compel them to return to their body but no that's not the right thing to do there was a big debate about it um and and that's yeah excellent excellent point Awesome. So, um, okay. Dikindre, did you have anything to follow up before we go to the next reference? Because I want to make no, sure that we're, no. I mean, we're already, like, we're at, right, gosh, right. we're at two no, hours. You got, I <laughs> but I promise it'll be better next time, okay? We're, we're figuring this stuff out as we go, and I hope that you guys are enjoying the conversation in any case. Um, let's see. Go ahead, Dave, and go to the next uh, reference that you were going to bring up because I, I, I realize everybody can read this. We also have bookmarked, and maybe I should just add it to the comments, the reading of the actual Aino Lindale in the, you know, in the Legendarium, in the Silmarillion. We, there's videos online of several versions, one of them being... Um, Amazing, I, I think the favorite one, and I guess because that's the one I had, thank you, Dave, was the one narrated by Martin Shaw. And it's so oh, yeah, wonderful that's really good. to listen to. You can like just listen to that, you know, in the background of like your, your day or whatever. You can just let that play in the background and it's just wonderful. So there's many places that you guys can all experience Ainu Lindale but there's not a lot of places that you can talk about how to integrate it into your spirituality. And we're hoping that we're doing that now. And this is the first class and it's long classes. Okay, sorry. Um, we're gonna try to have uh, like a little bit more bite-sized thing, you know, in the future so that it's not so much all at one time. But uh, yeah, so. Okay, Dave, just, next just... reference. Okay, there's just there's, there's just two of them. Uh, one, uh, it's the very last sentence here, and um, 
a Louvatar shall give to their thoughts the secret fire being well placed. Secret fire and flame imperishable are pretty much the same thing. Uh, and if okay. if people if people remember um, uh, in in um, the Lord of the Rings where Gandalf faces off uh, the Balrog on the yeah. uh, on the bridge, he refers to himself as the wielder of the secret fire. That's basically what he's talking about. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, and he was a keeper of the flame imperishable of Arda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was a he was a steward of that. Yeah, and Definitely. the only the only other reference where it talks about harmony here. Now, I am I I I, I like music, but I know almost nothing about how it's arranged or you know how it's done. But I did find this thing about how how you can keep the same theme, but change the harmony and change the whole mood of the music. And what I was thinking of is. The different Valar have have different moods. For example, uh, Nienna, it, 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 it's it, instead of her singing, that it turned to lamentation long before the song ended. So even though it's the same theme, the mood can be very different. And I just found this reference where this guy's playing on this uh, piano. He's playing "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star," but he he makes it sound very different. And I, I, apparently, these were Mozart Mozart's uh, compositions. So it's kind of interesting to see the video and watch him do it. Wow, very interesting. And on the note of music and the similarity of music, um, there is a like it's a a band, if you will, I guess maybe performers. Um, mm -hmm. Axis of Awesome. Has is anybody familiar with them? They have a video that they run together like 40 or 50 pop songs because they all have the same structure, but they all can be combined together. Oh, interesting. Is Okay. So yeah, we have another video to like go search out. Um, so it seems humorous, okay, because there is a, like an overarching kind of like you know, a certain pattern of music that everybody relates to and we rewrite it over and over and over again. And there's, there's so many ways to put it again, changing the moods, changing, you know, some things, but the, the core of the music is the same four notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look it up. Axis of awesome. Um, I'm going to type it in the chat. Uh, Okay, and then look for 40, 40 songs, pop music, you know, four chords, something like that. Okay, <laughs> look for it. It's great. It's just um, great. Another really interesting uh, group on that combines music interestingly on YouTube is called uh, The Piano Guys. And they have taken where they will combine modern, like they combine... Uh, fight song by uh, uh i can't think of her name at the moment but um and then they mix it with like amazing grace they mix like oh Frozen, let it go oh, with Vivaldi, uh but they they uh mix like uh let it go from frozen with vivaldi's like fifth and they actually oh, wow. manage to play classical music in the same and make them flow uh -huh. just harmoniously it's really impressive Oh my gosh, I, I'm thinking of all the people that do mashups, like where they take one song that totally doesn't sound like it would go with another song, combine them together, and it's ridiculous. I mean, like yeah. there's so many, there's so many artists that do that on YouTube now. Like, you know, like I guess DJs that like overlap the music together. These guys do it on like piano and like cello. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. What is her name? What, what, what are uh, they called? The Piano Guys. I, oh, okay. I typed They're it in the YouTube. chat just so that we could okay. reference it later okay. so that I didn't forget either. <laughs> yeah, they're really interesting. Excellent. Okay, Dave, we have one more source and nope. then wait before we get going. Musical fusions, you can use them for harmonizing with your voice to do vocal toning. Cool. Yes. Yes. No, yes. I, I, I've, done, I, I've, I've done all of my, all of my end notes, so we're done. Oh, yeah. excellent. You okay. Know, a, yeah. Okay. Uh, Dekindre, do you have anything uh, to add? Um, I guess we're just at the over two hour mark. Sorry about that, guys. We're we're estimating and we're just rolling with it, like how everybody is. But we're so glad that you 
staying tuned and that you're getting value out of this. That's what we really wanted. And to tell you why we exist and why you exist and why you're here and, you know, what is all happening. And um, I wanted to say that, like, shapes and things like that, also have musical resonance and it's very interesting that I was just thinking of the shape that Alira had discovered for us meaning that because we've been looking for a shape for what 13 you know 15 years right Dave for yeah, our path yeah. mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. knew we knew that it was a seven pointed something or something like that we just didn't know like yeah, what we actually it really found was the, we actually <laughs> found the the physical star flower first. I mean, the actual. We found you know, the plant. star flower yeah. first, which yeah. was very, uh, it was a softer version of the septogram heptagram that, right. by the way, has a history of use in traditional astrology magic from back in the Renaissance days. So a lot of people think, oh, yes. it's a modern star. No, no, it's actually ancient. But it might be modern as far as people's identity. Okay. That is probably modern, meaning of the 1970s, 1980s. I would say that that's true. However, the the angles and stuff, I mean, it feels really good, okay? But it's a broader meaning, and, and Dave and I, we like it, but we're like, mm, it's a little, it's not quite right. But the six-pointed star, like, that doesn't feel right either, okay? Um, even though the elves have a lot of six in their numbers and, you know, six seasons, six, you know, 36 Taratir, um, all of these things, but it really felt like the seven energy, and, of course, there's seven pairs, even, even for the ones that walk alone. There's seven pairs of Valar. There's seven stars in the Pleiades, which is Remoroth, and there's seven stars in Valakirka. So we knew that there was seven theme in something and we didn't know how, how quite that worked. And when Alira discovered the Septaquitra, which we, Dave and I then named it because we knew that that shape needed a name because it needed to resonate with not the Septagram. We needed right. a special name for that, okay? It just was like, yes, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is it. And so we are so happy to bring that to you guys so that I feel like that there is probably some kind of a musical resonance to that shape. And I don't know it yet, but I would be interested in learning about if any of you guys are specialists in shapes with musical tones I would be most interested in figuring out the, sh the, the music of the septaquitra versus the music of the septagram. I would be most interested because I feel like it's such a match for the elven, meaning the Tolkien elven path. And some of you here, if you're elven and you, and you like Tolkien, you can use it too. I mean, it's fine. We, we just want it to be an elven energy that accesses either you know, the DNA line that Dikindre was talking about, or, um, you know, the Tolkien energies, or even like, let's say that you are a practicing heathen and you resonate with the Alphar energies, which are very kind of close to the energies of Tolkien. Maybe that's what you very want to like bring into your energy. Yes, please use the Septuquitra. Um, you can combine them with, you know, Christianity, Druidism, you know, Wicca, heathenism, you know, atheism. We don't care. OK, you guys can do what you want with the Septuquitra for the basic, uh, you know, the. The basic shape of that. OK, and so we're hoping that you use the shape. Feel free, like identify with other people, have people ask you about it. Um, you know, you can wear it, you can draw it, you can do whatever, okay? Tia Odalieva has a seal, and we're working on getting that into merchandise and, you know, hopefully at some point jewelry and some other things, and we can't wait to bring that to you. But meanwhile, please, please pr proliferate the Septuquitra and put it out there into the world. We're all waking up right now, and I think that when people see that, they're going to be awakened, okay? Uh, let's see here. Comments. Uh, this is great. Glad. 
others. Okay. Glad others like this stuff and put effort in sharing. I love communities like this. Thank you. Soulmate healing. Okay. Interesting to find out. I guess we were talking about something. Okay. And uh, siren of the void says I like shamanism and mysticism. Excellent. So uh, I guess with that, um, any last, Last comments from Dave and and or DeKendre before we end it. Um, we're at we're coming up on two and a half, two and a quarter hours. Sorry. Uh, I just I just didn't know if you uh, wanted to give the the listeners uh, when the next meeting might be, or you know, or if, if we know or anything. Yeah, like that. we don't know yet. Here's the reason um, okay. because I'm usually the hostess, and I'm gonna be possibly traveling. Um, and, and have not so, you know, like sure of internet access and testing my equipment and all of that kind of stuff. So not really sure how this is going to work. We're going to try for weekly and we're going to change the times around so that, for instance, this time DeKendre could come. But other times we have people in Europe that want to come. So we'll like maybe have it at like right. 11 in the morning. Okay, um, like on maybe a Saturday or Sunday, maybe. Okay, so that people on the weekend could, you know, like Americans can like look at it on the weekend. Um, but our people in Europe can like then participate because right now they, they were in bed a long time ago. And even our East Coast people like went to bed. <laughs> oh, Except for this one. Says Valentina is the best hostess. Yes. <laughs> um might want to join the community we'd love it if you did Sir siren of the void if you want to send me a message um you can do uh, are you on facebook or like how do i know you you can also email me we have tia eldalieva at elven spirituality.com and i will get it um oh yeah she is really inclusive will the classes all be public okay this class is totally public tonight. The next two classes will be for our members only, as well as our teachers, and publicly viewable after the class. And then after that, it will only be the teachers. Okay, does that answer your question? Still awake? Yes. Uh, I am on Facebook. I approached you once about readings. Okay, I might. Oh, you might have approached me on Instagram because I because I had a person approach me about readings on Instagram. So that might be where I saw you. So we'll I'll, I'll actually great. Um, I'm timing magic on Instagram, but I'm also Elvin spiritual path because I'm handling the um, the account for um, Instagram. So you can reach me there too. So yes, get a hold of me at either Instagram or Facebook. Okay, PG Fruit says, do we have to be paid members to view the classes live? For the next two classes, yes. Um, that would be at the $5 level for those. And then the people that are $10 levels, they're the teachers. For the third, or I'm sorry, the fourth and on, the all the rest of the classes, they will only be for teachers and only the archives for teachers. So no, there's though that's going to be for teachers. So we're having material like tonight. This is publicly available through live streamed and for um, you guys to watch the recordings. Okay, we're going to continue to do this for the next couple of weeks. And yeah, it's it's only five. Oh, it's only five for the membership. And that's for uh, the next two classes. And then it upgrades to $10 for the classes thereafter. Okay. And you get all the rituals and all of that stuff. So if you have more questions, I know it's confusing, but just send me a message and I'll, I'll hook you up. Okay. Okay. So glad you joined. This is absolutely gold. That's what Jamie says. Oh, can we use that for our testimonial? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, <laughs> just because we talked yes. about it earlier, I did want to touch on it. I used the site Ian said that was the one he recommended for the human design thing that he said was better. The um, And it still gave yeah, me Yeah, I forget which one I use. Yeah, yeah. I forget which one I use. 
but it actually gave me the manifesting generator. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so you might have changed your birth time. Like maybe the program nope. is like a little bit wonky. Okay. Exactly That's very interesting. Okay. It was just the one that he recommends as being more accurate actually listed me as a manifesting generator. Okay. So you have the throat. Basic. The sacral. Um, if you could, Kendra, you could email me your chart because I want to see because I been studying a little bit about this. I want to see what your defined centers are. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. So maybe I thought it was Facebook though. It might have been, but I, I remember specifically somebody reaching out to me a reading on Instagram. So just check that. Um, okay. It's Jamie says, yes. Okay. Wow. DeKendre. Okay. Uh, Peachy Fruit says, I'll sign up then. Yes. Yes. Welcome okay, another, another manifesting <laughs> generators. Hey, we need you guys. <laughs> we need manifesting generators because me and Dave are projectors <laughs> and we are not good at this shit. <laughs> well, you saw what happened just with the tech problems in the I beginning. Know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, know. Well, I have, well, I, have uh, I have this thing that uh, makes tabs in my browser called Clover. And the thing is, uh, sometimes it interferes with a GDI renderer, and, and it'll it'll open like thousands of tabs. <laughs> and the only way you can get rid of it is to log out and log back in. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's terrible. Okay, so any more human design people here? You can send me your chart. Um, I've been in a group uh, with Raquel Reina, and that's how I've been like studying a little bit. There's other places to learn human design, though. Like you guys probably know some other groups, things like that. But I like um, Raquel and Davidian's videos about projectors and manifesting generators, et cetera, because they actually, even though they're a couple, they actually do it from a business standpoint. And Raquel herself is a projector and knows how hard it is to be a projector and be in business for yourself because of the lack of that access to the energy that generators have. So it's, it's interesting, like what she uh, has discovered about business as a projector. Um, Miss Jamie says, LOL. <laughs> and, and, and Siren of the Void says, and to think that I started this whole thing, I initiated in a sense. <laughs> you did, it's okay. Um, we're here for, you know, I guess you get human design with, um, you know, the Ina Lindelay. Where else could you get this combination? <laughs> so, because we have hobbies. Okay. I'm going to let you guys all get going. You have a wonderful evening. Um, Dave and or DeKendre, you can stay on after end for the night. Um, yes, you can miss Jamie. Okay. Send it to me either on IG or Facebook. I think we're connected in either one. So yes, I, I would love to see it. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll send you guys mine too. I'm a projector and I have a, a completely open sacral. If you guys know what that means, that means none of the gates are defined. So it gets a little bit weird for me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. We'll end. Uh, we will end the stream for Dave's document. And then that way we can all say goodbye. Yay. Goodbye, okay. everybody. Bye. Uh, light ha and blessings to all. Okay. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. Just let us know about questions. Download the document and hopefully you fall in love with us and want to become a teacher at the $10 level. But we'll even take $5 levels if you guys want to hang out with us the next two times and live meaning and also for private rituals okay uh, we really need more more teachers because we're we're building this organization so i know uh, i know yeah. we have okay so last time i totaled up the teachers we have nine of you that's the last time i looked and oh, i well, think okay. that we have about 25 i think we have a, approximately 25 paying members mm -hmm. like collectively including the teachers so so there's about 15 people that are members and then about 
you know, like almost 10 people that are teachers. And so wow, that's, yes. what I expected. Yeah. that's cool. Yes, <laughs> we, we actually are doing really well there. Uh, we did not realize um, how many of you guys were really interested in the legendarium. So we are, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, Peachy Fruit says, I, or Siren of the Void says, I love teaching. And Peachy, Peachy Fruit says, donated my five years. Yes, thank you. And we'll, wow. I'll be looking at that. I, the, Alira gets the notes before I do, but I'll check it out. Okay. And I know that Miss Jamie has joined because I talked to her about this earlier. And I think that we're all good. So you guys, we're going to let you get going. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see if we can do side by side. <laughs> Light. Tob, blessings to all of you. Have a good night. Take care. We'll see you ne hopefully next week, and I'll get you guys notified uh, by email, and it'll be on the Facebook, and it will be also in Instagram, okay? So I'm going to tell you guys when it is. You may get um, a recording instead, which is fine because we're what we're going to try to do is tighten it up for just the members so that they have more opportunity for asking questions and having more of a dialogue. Okay. DeKendra, did you want to join us next time if um, Ian or other people don't join us? That would be uh, nice absolutely. if you did. I, I enjoy it. Awesome. We can enjoy it. It's great because we're, we're generators. <laughs> and, uh, it was, it, awesome. It was really nice. It was really nice for me to meet you too, because uh, Lisa spoken of your name, but I I, and I I never you know spoke with you before, so that's that's kind of cool. Likewise, likewise. Yeah. Awesome. You guys have a good night. Okay. And we'll talk to you later. I'm going to end the broadcast now. You guys have a wonderful evening, right. and we'll see you next time. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.